In the last few years, banks around the world have experienced a very challenging environment. He had to outline some of the ways in which banks can remain competitive and will have to remain competitive is uh, Jean van der Kolf, who is Banking Executive Director from Accenture South Africa. Jean, you've got out uh, one of these reports that Accenture does periodically, and I think it's partly uh, how are banks going to remain competitive, but also how are they just going to deal p possibly with regulators who want to make them change? That's correct. I think we're going through a very exciting time in banking where banks have to rethink their operating models, their business models and how they deal with the regulator. Mm -hmm. What kind of shifts then are we seeing and what kind of evolution is happening as banks are basically forced down this road? Mm. So I think particularly on kind of global trends you're seeing um, globalization of banks and banks really thinking about how to uh, industrialize their operating model so that they can replicate that effectively in multiple countries. Locally, I think we've got some other trends, particularly around kind of fee and interest income and the pressures around that and around um, customer intimacy. So banks really getting to understand what their customers' needs are and shifting to be more customer-centric. Mm -hmm. There are other things, though, technical things, capital adequacy ratios. Uh, they've got to look after depositors' money. They've got to provide capital for the economy and make a return on investors. So there's talk in Britain in particular about actually just you, you, you may no longer have an investment bank with a retail bank. That's quite right, and I think that's more around kind of the risk associated with um, doing both of those and in the interest of kind of customer um, security, etc. So yeah. I think most of our banks are quite well set up if that should happen, but um, would certainly change their income statement and balance sheet. Of course, uh, what's been highlighted in this report that high performers demonstrate that multi channel clients can be twice as profitable and exhibit a greater loyalty as well. So that feeds into this model that we're seeing uh, possibly come to the fore a little bit uh, more aggressively as clients then become clients of the various components of the business. That's correct and I think multi-channel is really interesting because um, you know customers have really been um, conditioned by retailers so who is the Amazon of banking is the question I think we should be asking. Mm -hmm. Do you Look have an answer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yes, that's right. Why should you ask us the question? Do you have an answer? So I think that in South Africa, they're all racing to be the Amazon yeah. of banking. So if you're looking at what the banks are doing, they're all investing heavily in kind of the digital channels, looking at how they can mm. encourage their customers to be mm. multi-channel and moving them out of branches. FNB would probably claim to be the Amazon at the moment in terms mm. of innovation. And I've heard other bankers acknowledge that they, at the moment, are leading the innovation race. But our situation is interesting because FNB is part of First Rand. First Rand has a different model to the others. It's yes. more decentralized and possibly if the regulators want to separate things, it's very easy for them and be more difficult for the others. Um, yes, I think so, but I, I don't think that, I mean, kind of in corporate structures, they're very well separated, but I think they still have shared clients across mm -hmm. that group. Um, and so for all of the banks, that will be a challenge in terms of, you know, how do you deal with a corporate that, quite honestly, the retail banks traditionally actually look after the transactional accounts of corporates, mm -hmm. and what will that mean to an investment bank, and where does that transactional yeah. account go? In terms of innovation, I mean, what are you seeing in terms of activity happening between banks and then other sectors of the economy and of course uh, most popular has been the kind of relationships banks are starting to have with telecom operators specifically. Mm. An interesting relationship because I think it's going to become more and more competitive as the um, retailers and the telecommunication companies really are kind of fighting for that transactional space. So although they have quite friendly relationships, joint ventures, etc. now, they really are the biggest threat to the kind of retail banking sector. Mm. Do they perhaps move rather like your kind of organisations came from, you know, auditors and accountants who become advisors? and consultants. Mm -hmm. And I know one of the big banks, is uh, FNB, is talking about branches are no longer places where you do transactions. That's it's correct. where you go to get advice and yes. to talk about issues and to learn the technology. Yeah. So if there's iPads and things, you go to the branch to learn about how to use it. Exactly. So I think the, the banks all recognize that the kind of unprofitable transactions need to move on to the very inexpensive digital channels and that branches need to change into sales advisory mm. um, type environments.